Howdy, folks. This is Market Explainer. We are the number one business and market news place podcast. All right. Well, before I get into that, I want to tell you about our sponsor for the next segment, my my company, WorkAtHomeStuff.com. Uh, the big man is correct. A lot of people are going back to work, but a lot of people are getting their final marching orders that they are just working at home from now on. <laughs> Not even um, their final marching orders, just saying, hey, I ain't coming back. Yeah, and this is a lot of people in my family that they were like, yeah, I'm not going back to the office. Right. And their company's like, yeah, okay, we get it. Right? <laughs> um, so you're going to need a desk, you're going to need a chair, stuff like that. You can go to workinghomestuff.com um, for all of that stuff. And you can, mm -hmm. you know, we have a bunch of articles on there about why you should choose what kind of desk and so on and so forth. So absolutely. this next story, what's that? I said, absolutely. And this next story, as Danny said, is Danny's non-story story of the day. This is not a non-story. This is it not is a non-story. Non -story. This is a story. Go so, ahead and you tell us why it's a story. This is why I said heavy Danny. This is a car story. First, we had a yes. watch story. That's correct. Now, we have a car story. Not right. even an American car story, but a European car story. So, it's okay. a fancy car story. And it's a... When you get into the actual details that Danny completely skims over, it is That's a really non-story story. And I'll tell you why when Danny's done go ahead okay so for any of us who are fans of top gear which is anybody who's really into cars or their um amazon you know kind of remake of those guys was grand tour you'll mm -hmm. know that um not clarkson the hamster uh jeremy hammond or hammond whatever i forget his first name now but he crashed a rimac on an electric uh hypercar he crashed it on a hill climb and nearly died because the thing caught on fire. Did he? I did yeah. not hear that. Right. And uh, that that company, Rimac, the Croatian electric supercar maker that started in the garage 10 years ago, is now going to join forces with Bugatti, and they're going to change their name. They're going to be Bugatti Rimac now. And it's that's that that in and of itself, that a Croatian company now owns a piece of what used to be Volkswagen, which well, Volkswagen used to own the, the entirety of Bugatti, you know, an Italian supercar that has okay. so much rich heritage. I always, I thought from the very beginning of when Volkswagen started building Bugattis that they were ugly. I never thought they were good looking. I didn't care for the, sh I don't care for the Chiron. I don't care for any of them. Okay. But the fact that a Croatian electric supercar company that started in a garage in Croatia, not a place anybody goes, oh, he got a Croatian car. He's doing real well. Okay? <laughs> no, no shade so to Croatia. So your interest in this story is the fact that, that a Croatian car company Correct. is joining forces with a much more well-known high-end name in Europe. That's your, correct. That's your interest so, in the story. So what's going to happen is, um, uh, you know, Rimac is partly owned, is going to remain partly owned by Porsche. Uh -huh. um, Porsche owns, and this is, this, this, this pool of businesses is extremely incestuous and it's nearly impossible. Well, and this is why, hold on, so this is why I say it's a story, non-story, right? So okay. I was interested to figure out what your interest Angle. in this story was, and I get it. So, the, so okay, that, that makes me feel a little bit better. Why I say it's a, it's a non-story story it's a ten -year -old is because of the incestuous, what you were just talking about, incestuous right. business. You have so, Remax is going to control 55%. Porsche is Correct. going to get 45%. But Porsche already owns 24% of Remac. Yeah. Remac is then also going to, is also a, a or I'm sorry, Hyundai is also a 12% yeah, stakeholder yeah. of Remac. But right. they're, so they're also going to get to benefit from the relationship that is now a 55% stake in what is Bugatti yeah. Rimac. Rimac? So what right. you end up having, and what this is why I say it's a, a non-story story, is this is really has nothing to do with nothing except for getting, and you're seeing this in all of the automotive industry partners out there, right? Is what Elon Musk wanted to happen ten years ago right. was, hey, I want to get into the automotive industry and help everybody make electric cars better. Right. Nobody wanted to work with him. 
Right. Now you fast forward 10 years, Elon Musk figures Tesla out for the most part, right? You have all these other small companies trying to get into the business and your existing car manufacturers want to, instead of go out and necessarily acquire these smaller ones that have made it up to small and medium, like Arrivian or whatever. They right. just want to develop their own and buy technologies and stuff like right. that. And they want to share the cost, by the way. Right. Right. General Motors and doesn't want to is, do it by itself. General Motors wants to do it with this and with that. And, you know, yeah, that's so what this Ford, is. Ford has a, has a tie up with Rivian. General Motors, you know, had that tie up with a company that we cannot name anymore, but they were right. a scam. But, you know, um, a, a lot of it was is they understand that electric cars are just going to happen and there's nothing they can do about it. And they they understand one thing. Why would we go acquire this company when we have the hundreds of years of heritage and we're just going to acquire their technology and we're going to play nice. And then when the time comes, we're going to squash you like a bug. Well, you you Porsche is going to control 45 percent of this company. Right. That is meaningless if it fails to them. It Correct. affects them. Nada. Bugatti's right. same thing, right? Bugatti's got his name on it, but they're keeping the company separate, 100% separate. So it means if this fails, if this comp electric car company venture fails right. entirely, if you look at, again, the way this is all set up, it it's meaningless to anybody involved. Except for Rimac, which Rimac is, they go... But that's the original up. Croatian electric right. car but company just, anyway. Here's what it blows my mind. Ten years ago, some guy in Zagreb is trying to make an electric supercar in Croatia in his garage. And it's not like he had a, like, um, Koenigsegg, uh, you know, like Daniel Koenigsegg was, you know, kind of made the amazing uh, hypercars. It's not like it was one of his, like, pristine, you know, air-sealed, hermetically-sealed facilities. This was a garage in Croatia. A garage, yeah, in Croatia. It looked like a garage in Croatia, okay? And the okay. fact that 10 years after that, and the fact that this was not a small crash, this was a huge PR nightmare for them, that this guy took the car and it lit on fire, and it was like it, a regular internal combustion engine is not going to tumble down a hill and light on fire like this. Right, right, right. That's in the movies, right? Like that, right. that doesn't happen in reality. And this was like, yeah. Hey, good, bad PR, right? Like sometimes all, you know what I mean? I guarantee you when that happened, when that when that aired or when that happened and made the news, right. I guarantee you car manufacturers, Porsche, we got, may, some of them may have not had no idea who this guy is. Right. Or was, and then all right. of a sudden, this news article comes out, and somebody at Porsche goes, "Uh, what? does anybody know people? about this car? Right? Like, did, did anybody watch this? Did somebody watch it? You know, like." And the other thing too is, um, the advancement of technology has gotten so good mm -hmm. that it's easy for companies to go out there and, and put together. Not easy. It's easier than it's ever been. For a guy to go out there and say, I'm going to start an electric supercar company and I'm going to source this from China and that from here and this from Germany. And I just got to go here and I can put the whole thing together and it's become, I can 3D print this. It blows my mind that a guy in Croatia could do this. And it blows well, my mind even. Alibaba and you know what I mean? All these different kind of sites like that where I can buy almost anything from almost any place in the world for relatively inexpensive. And like you said, 3D printing, right? Yes. Certain things and stuff like that. And so you... I'm just fascinated, right? That after 10 years, a company can end up in a partnership with Bugatti, one of the most uh, long running names in auto manufacturing mm -hmm. and that they even got their name tagged listen the fact that it is bugatti rimac the fact that that's even happened that they're even putting the name on it the fact that they just didn't say we're acquiring the entirety of rimac technology and shutting rimac down and now the entire well, team but obviously the smartest people in the world aren't putting these deals together we we just talked about the one with gm how did yeah. that even happen when you yeah. have billions of dollars to yeah vet these yeah. contracts but i tell you what i couldn't find anywhere in this article and another one that i read about it where any money changed hands yeah so it's all just everybody so, shook hands 
Everybody shook hands and said, "We're just, you know, we're all shaking at the urinal." There's no, no one's pissing in someone else's so, cup. Unlike here, so. the General Motors one, where that yeah. guy got a check. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like Porsche and Bugatti. They've just basically said, "Hey, if you figure it out, right? We're with you. Great on you. We're there yeah. to help. But if you no, don't, I think some of the technology is already you, Porsche is already using some of their technology. So, and look, some I'm of just the, thinking. I'm just Porsche saying, may get, Porsche may get, he may figure out something, not necessarily an entire electric car, but right. figures out something that is useful to them, and it's right. worth every penny they may or may not give him, right? Correct. But I couldn't find anywhere on here, unlike the General Motors deal, that was right. like, here's, you know what I mean, $10, 20000000 million. Everybody just exchanged paperwork. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I but just, good luck again, to him. I hope yeah. he figures it out. Right. I'm sure everybody out there would buy an electric Porsche. You know what I mean? 911 right. if it came out, you know. That's disgusting. Dude, a Porsche 911 never... is the most recognized Porsche on the yeah. planet. Don't and snarl I would never your buy... nose. I'm yeah, just I know. And if, and if people buy an electric one, they're stupid. I'm not buying a Porsche, period. But. Well, I'm that's because saying... you don't fit. But, yeah. <laughs> Why you got to take it to a fat place, Danny? I didn't take it, take it to a, a fat, fat place. place. You could have just at been the like, fat place okay, I don't like, you know what I mean, Porsches, all right? Okay, neither one of us would fit, all right? Okay, That's not true. I can fit. I know I can we fit. We definitely, the two of us ain't getting in together, all right? That's, all right, that's for sure. All right, but go, go ahead. Okay. 